day. Good, good. Uh, we are working on our music, so that's good. We have lots of options, so that will be good. I'm going to talk really slow so that we have more time. No, just kidding. So I'm pa Pastor Bob. I'll be leading the service today. Pastor Tiemann will be preaching. This is the last in our Family Life Together series. And uh, it's going to be a great sermon, a great message, and a great day. Uh, we have some announcements this week, but first of all, we have our connection cards. If you are visiting with us for the first time, first of all, welcome to our services. Uh, and also, if you could stop by and see Pastor Tiemann on your way out, he'll have a gift for you. Uh, some of the announcements for this week is Transformed. Uh, I think everybody has at least heard of it, but that begins next week. So our first sermon in that series of seven will be next weekend. And then small groups will all meet after the sermon throughout the week. We have quite a few uh, options available in terms of groups. We have information in the back. There's a bulletin board by the library. Uh, we have a table out in the lobby. And again, this is all about improving the different aspects of our lives. So part of it is finding balance, as Pastor has talked previously in our sermons about. And part of it is just kind of looking at where we are and where would we like to be and helping each other to get to where we would like to be, whether it's in our faith or physical health or uh, whatever it might be. So that's one opportunity. Uh, we also have next weekend is rally day, so Sunday school will be starting up. Uh, we'll have education hour as well, which will primarily be focused on transforms. So we'll have a variety of options uh, for transform during education hour. Confirmation will also start. If you are the parent of a confirmation age student, you should have received an email on Friday. If you didn't, please see me after the service. Uh, we have information available through that email. We also have two meetings. Uh, tomorrow night, as part of the school open house, there'll be a small presentation, and some of the leadership for the new confirmation program will be available to talk with you or answer any questions. And then also Tuesday night at 7, we'll be here as well. So those are two opportunities. Uh, confirmation will begin next week on Sunday morning at 9.30 till 10.45, and that will be in the multipurpose room. Other things, uh, we have Upward. Upward will kind of begin its new season. If you're not familiar with Upward, it's our sports ministry to our community. So we have lots of people come in, up to 2,500 people. Uh, they come through the program, come through our doors, they gain some knowledge about sports. Uh, they also gain some knowledge about their Savior. So it's a great program. And uh, if you are able to provide a couple of hours of support per month, uh, there's a sign-up after the service in the back, almost to the door on the right. So we'll have folks, uh, if you're interested in helping with that. So with that, why don't we stand, we'll greet each other, and then we'll begin by singing our first hymn, Salvation Unto Us Has Come.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, for I delight in it. Your word is a lamp to my feet. O Lord, give ear to my voice when I call to you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The Lord is compassionate and rich in forgiveness. Let us then confess our sins to our gracious Lord. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and mighty judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not always lived faithfully. We have turned from your ways and have not done the good you demand in our lives. We have not loved you fully or our neighbors completely. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy on us, merciful Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son. By your grace, forgive us, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct us to serve you joyfully all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has promised his merciful forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him trustingly. In his stead and by his command, therefore, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May our God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you in the ways of faith and obedience, and finally bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A Reformation Reflection, Education. One of the hallmarks of the Reformation is its emphasis on the importance of a good education for all people. Although the church had been the center of learning for centuries, by the time Martin Luther lived, receiving a good education was not guaranteed. As he grew in reputation and in the estimation of German town leaders, Luther made a case for mandatory education of all children. He wanted children to have a solid religious foundation and the opportunity to develop themselves for civic service. Speaking to councilmen in a German city in 1524, Luther said, in order to maintain its temporal estate outwardly, the world must have good and capable men and women. Therefore, it is a matter of property, properly educating and training our boys and girls to that end. Once he became a parent, Luther made sure that his children were properly educated, especially in the Christian faith and in musical skills. At the heart of the Reformation, for Luther was the principle of sola scriptura, the centrality of Holy Scripture. It was of the greatest importance, Luther felt, that each person be able to read God's word for himself or herself. Education was not simply for greater career opportunities. In reflecting on Psalm 119, verse 105, which was part of our opening sentences, Luther commented, true it is that, the human, that human wisdom and the liberal arts are noble gifts of God, good and useful for all kinds of things. Wherefore, one cannot do without them in this life. But they can never thoroughly tell us what sin and righteousness are in the eyes of God, how we can get rid of sins, become pious and just before God, and pass from death into life. Wisdom divine and an art supreme are required for this, and one does not find them in the books of any jurist or worldly wise person, 
but in the book in the but in the Bible alone, which is the Holy Spirit's book. Much of Luther's writing was educational in nature. Many brief works, such as pamphlets, tracts, and catechisms, which were written throughout his career, taught people in all walks of life. One special form that Luther used was the catechetical hymn. For each of the six chief parts of the small catechism, Luther crafted a hymn that would help the faithful remember the truths found in his explanations. The last of these hymns, published in a hymn collection in Leipzig in 1539, is a versification of the Lord's Prayer. We continue with our Old Testament reading. And the Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 66. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What is this house that you would build for me, and what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. This is the word of the Lord. In the epistle lesson, epistle lesson is from Galatians chapter 4. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is under owner of everything. And he is under guardians and managers until a date set by his father. In the same way we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, of, you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for today is according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke records, Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. At this time, we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning. I know you guys are out there. Come on up. Let's talk for a little bit. I'll wait for you, yeah? I won't forget about you. Can you guys see this black board right here? Why don't you sit on the floor right here, all the way down. There we go, perfect. Awesome, so do you see my black board right here? Yes. We're gonna talk a little bit on this board about school. Raise your hand if anybody is going to school starting soon. Ooh, oh my gosh, almost all of you are gonna be going to school. At school time, sometimes it gets a little bit um, tricky. Sorry. And scary. And scary. Yeah, I'm going to just turn my microphone off here because I think it's making all that noise. Okay. So a little bit tricky and a little bit scary. And I wanted to talk to you about some of the feelings you might have when we go to school. Have you ever worried about, like, your teacher for school? Some of you have probably already met your teacher, and I'm sure your teacher's nice, but some people worry that their teacher and their teacher might be scary. So I found a picture of a scary teacher. <laughs> look at that scary teacher. She's got green hair. It doesn't look very nice. There's a scary teacher. Some people worry about that. They worry about their teacher. Maybe you have one of those too. That you worry that your teacher might not be a nice person. A little scary. Sometimes people worry about leaving their mom. Maybe that first day when you get dropped off and you're a little nervous, leaving mom can be a little bit scary. 
Well, we are starting school this week. And the theme for this year's school year is called, It's Still All About Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So look at all these feelings that people might have and watch what I'm going to do. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a look at your sermon note this morning. You can follow along as we go, especially the memory verse at the bottom of the page. Jesus once said, and he says again to us, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to to such as these. But before we get to the notes, three quick stories. So story number one, there was a little boy who went away to camp for the very first time. He was having a great time, very excited, but of course mom and dad are a little worried that they, that he might miss them at camp. So they call, you get one call at camp, check on your child to see how they're doing, and they asked if he was homesick, and he said no. And they were disappointed because they wanted him to be homesick. 
right? So they ask, well, are any of the kids homesick? And he says, only the ones who have dogs at home, <laughs> right? Been there. Story number two, man's in the kitchen. He wants to know what time it is. He doesn't have his watch with him. No Fitbit or anything like that. Doesn't have a cell phone. So he hears his little son, Bobby. He's in the kitchen. So he yells out, Bobby. Yeah, Dad. Tell me what the little hand is on. Long pause. A chocolate chip cookie? <laughs> All right, story number three. Belker is a 13-year-old Irish wolfhound. He has been the family pet all of this time. He is very attached, mom and dad, and now little four-year-old Shane loves old Belker. But Belker is old. He's getting sick. They're at the vet, and they're wondering if there are any more miracles for old Belker. And the vet says, no, I'm afraid there is not. He's coming to the end of his life and he's soon going to pass away. Very sad time. The next day, they're back. Shane has Belker in his lap. He's gently and lovingly petting his friend. And he does indeed pass away right there. But little Shane, he's very brave, and he has a great perspective on life. They're all talking then about why it is that dogs don't live as long as humans. And Shane says, I know. <laughs> this is a four-year-old. And they all ask, well, well, why? And he says, well, you know, humans are put on this earth so that they can learn to love everybody and be nice all the time. <laughs> the dogs already know how to do this, so they don't have to stay here quite as long, right? This morning we want to talk about these amazing qualities that children have. You know, all summer we've been talking about families, and we began, if you recall, the very beginning of the summer, talking about how we are all God's children. We all belong to his family. So we want to end up with those qualities that God has given to us as his children, regardless of our age, that unfortunately we sometimes forget. So if you put up the notes, let's begin with this. Even though there are many qualities, we're going to talk about these three. As Jesus said, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So let's go to the first one, the ability to celebrate life. As I said before, some folks lose that ability. There's no more celebration. There's no more joy. There's there's no energy, there's no zeal, there's no delight in learning new things. I know there's a famous book, a lot of you have heard of it, written by Robert Fulgham, All I Needed to Learn, I Learned in Kindergarten, or All I Needed to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. You remember the book? Maybe you've read it? Well, he did a little study, and he went first to kindergartners. Obviously, they're at the very beginning of their formal education, and he asked these three questions there in your notes. How many of you can sing? Well, if you are a kindergartner, what are you going to do? Raise your hand. I can sing. Well, what can you sing? Anything. It doesn't matter. But if you don't know the words, it's okay. I'll still sing. I'll hum if I have to, right? Another question. How many of you can draw? Again, what do you think? All the hands go up, right? What can you draw? Well, anything. It doesn't matter. Can you draw a house? Sure. Can you draw uh, a human being? Sure. Can you draw a whole family? Sure. How many do you want? And away they go. Well, how many of you can dance? <laughs> All of them. You want to dance right now? Sure. They can dance right there. That's the way it is. Every answer. It's always, yes, I can do that. They have this spirit. They have this confidence that everything is possible. Now fast forward. Go to college, kids. Same question. Any university, any college, ask them, can you sing? Well, not so well. Well, maybe in a group, you want to join the choir? Well, no, that's a lot of pressure. Can you draw? No, my major is English. 
Not my niche. Can't do that. Can you dance? Well, only after a couple of beers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's it. Well, how about you? Can you sing? Can you draw? Can you dance? You want to get up now and do it? <laughs> we lose somehow this enthusiasm for life that God has given to us because the world says this, it's not your niche. The world says you're not good at that. The world says don't show off. The world says stay in your place. But God says that's not how I created you. That is not the spirit that I put in you. It's your baptism. You got a new life, a new heart, a new spirit, and we're to remember that every single day. So my friends, don't give in to cynicism. Don't give in to bitterness. Certainly don't give in to crabbiness. You are a new creation. You're a child of God and you have the ability to celebrate life. Number two, you also have this unique ability to marvel at God's blessing. <clears throat> this last week, Sharon and I had the opportunity to babysit a two-year-old. No, we're not grandparents yet. There is no hidden baby in the closet at home. <clears throat> but one of the members of the church came to us and they asked, they were celebrating their anniversary, could we watch their two-year-old? Sure, of course we could. We'd love to do that. So we did. Now, thankfully, at least I'm thankful, that <clears throat> John and Andrew were still home and uh, Andrew's internship was over, so he's home. John's there too, so we have a little help, a little backup just in case because two-year-olds have a lot of energy. But they also marvel at everything. So here's this little two-year-old, and you know they're only about this tall, so they see things with, with a different perspective. <clears throat> they don't have the language yet that we do. But we handed her a little Cheerio. She's supposed to eat it, of course. And she looks at it, and she goes, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and then she said a whole lot of things I didn't understand. Right? And then we gave her a little Lego to play with. This was Andrew now. He loves to build Legos. He has lots of them still in the basement. Anybody need Lego Legos? I want to give them away, right? <laughs> so playing with those, and the same thing. She looks at it, and she goes, oh. And then she hands it, you know, like, you want to play? You want to play? Then we took her outside, and we did a little walk through the yard. If you ever need a little energy, just take a two-year-old or a toddler for an adventure in the yard. Doesn't matter how big, you don't have to have a big yard, just go around. We have these little things in our yard called dandelions. I try to get rid of them. She picks it up and she just looks at it. The eyes get big and it's like, wow. Part of God's creation. Isn't it amazing? how these little ones can look at things with amazement and wonder and joy and gratitude and even ecstasy. Can you imagine the dandelion eliciting that kind of a response from someone like us? Now compare that, if you will, with a famous story. Maybe you've heard it. It's written by Earl Nightingale a long time ago called The Acres of Diamonds. It's a story about a discontented farmer in Africa. He hears these marvelous stories about diamonds. And all the farmers are finding them. They're finding them and they are making literally millions of dollars with these discoveries. Now this farmer, he is tired of his farm. He's tired of his house. He's tired of his wife. He's tired of his existence. And so he thinks, I'll go discover some diamonds. And then life will be grand. And so he sells his farm. And he goes. And he, he explores the entire continent. But lo and behold, he doesn't find a thing. No diamonds. And he becomes even more miserable than he was before. But he sells his farm to someone else. And this other farmer... He is wandering around one day, just kind of looking around, seeing exactly everything that's on this farm that he's bought. And he comes across a stream, and he sees this flash of light, brilliant reds and, and blue. And, and he goes to the stream, and he looks down, and 
there's this stone. It's, it's oh, a rather large stone. But it looks like an ordinary rock, except in some places it's rather polished. And it's shiny, and this light is just emanating from the stone. And he picks it up, and he takes it back to his house, and he thinks this will be a really interesting thing to talk about when people come to visit me. And he puts it up on the mantle of his fireplace. And there it sits for years until someone comes along and says, do you know what you have there? That is one of the largest diamonds that has ever been discovered. And not only was it the largest diamond, but there are all kinds of them in that stream. My friends, the point is clear. We have the greatest diamonds in our own backyard. We don't have to travel all over the world to discover God's riches, God's blessings. They are all around us. Look again in a new way with new eyes, the eyes of a child, and all of your blessings. Look at your family and your home and your life in a brand new way. You don't have to travel all over the world. You don't have to go yonder when right here God has already given you all of these wonderful blessings. Ezekiel once wrote, I will send down showers in season, talking about God, there will be showers of blessings, and not just for farmers, but for all of us, if we simply open our eyes. We are the children of God, and we do have a unique ability to celebrate life and to marvel at, at all the blessings and riches that God has given us. And then the last one, and probably the most difficult, the one that as we get older we sometimes have the hardest time with, and that is simply the ability to trust. The ability to trust in other people, certainly, but the ability to trust in our God. Now, whenever you need a point to really come alive, you need to go to a source that is full of great wisdom and very clear theology. So I go to Peanuts, the comic strip. You know, Charlie Brown, right? Kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. He really is a very wise and intelligent young man, but he doesn't always feel the love of other people. So in this particular strip, it's Charlie Brown and his friend, Peppermint Patty. Chuck doesn't really get it that Patty kind of likes him. And here they are, and they're talking together, and, and Patty asks a question, as she often does, and she says, Chuck, what do you think security is? Now, that's a pretty deep question. What do you think security is? Charlie Brown thinks about it. And he says, security is sleeping in the back seat of your parents' car. Remember those days? When you're coming home at night from a long trip, and you're all worn out, and you just go to sleep, and there's nothing to worry about. Because mom and dad are in the front seat, and they're worrying about everything for you. Patty says, that sounds really nice. But then, Charlie Brown gets this really serious look, and he raises his index finger, and he says, but then you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> but then you grow up, and it doesn't last. It never lasts. And Patty says, never? And he says, never. And then she just holds out her hand and she says, hold my hand, Chuck. Hold my hand. My friends, we are the children of God. He has sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into this world for one purpose, and that is to save us, to redeem us, to buy us back, not only from sin and death and Satan himself, but from all of these insecurities and anxieties and worries that, that so often develop in our lives. 
He has restored to us those original qualities that are in our creation. When we remember our baptism on a daily basis, we can recapture this, this unique childlike ability to celebrate, to love life, to not give up regardless of our circumstances, and to marvel again at God's great blessing. So many of them right here in this room, surrounding us in our lives already. I pray that you'll open up your, heart, your eyes once again like that little two-year-old, that you too will marvel at God's blessing. But most of all, that you will trust once again in our great God to know that he is there always for you, to tell you that he's always going to be there, to tell you that you don't have to go through life's demands on your own, and yes, when needed, when necessary, to hold your hand. May God grant that once again. And may this become a church of children of all ages. May God grant that to you and to Emmanuel for Jesus' sake. Amen. This morning for our profession of faith, we're going to use Luther's explanation to the second article. So let's all rise as we begin there with the second article of the creed and then the explanation. Please join me. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, We continue with the prayer of the church. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that we might continue to cultivate and encourage the ability to celebrate life, to marvel at your rich blessings, and to trust in you in all things, even when life is difficult. Strengthen our resolve through your spirit to reach out to families and children in our community through our Lutheran Day School, our Upward Sports Ministry, our Sunday School, and Youth Ministries, that we might continue to be a church for children of all ages. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those in need. We pray especially for Roger Baldwin, Bob Pop, Jim Kirk, Jerry Schumacher, Blanche Rasmussen, Joy Schneiderwin, Carol Ernst, Robert Westfall, Eleanor Stegman, and Jean Dorn. Lord, we also raise up a prayer of thanksgiving for successful surgery for Sharon Kokio. Also this week, we had a new member of our church family, Malachi Emmanuel Boone, born to John and Shabria. We ask that you would continue to be with him, keep him in good health. Lord, we also celebrate the wedding of Barb Tobin and Steve Versman. We ask that you would continue to be with them throughout their marriage life, that they would continue to grow in love for each other and also and their love for you. Lord, we pray for Kathy Lemke and her family at the loss of her father, Walter Miller. During this time of loss and mourning, Lord, we ask that you would fill them with your peace, fill them with the hope of eternal life with their loved ones in heaven through faith in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, 
and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, we also raise up all our students returning to school. Some have already returned, some have returned but have not yet started classes. Lord, we pray for all our children of all ages that you would be with them, that you would bless them as they go to school, as they grow in their understanding of your creation, but also as they continue to grow in their understanding of you. And Lord, we also ask that you would bless those teachers that are with the students, that through their vocation, their calling to teach, that they would be your representatives in their classrooms, whether it's here at Emmanuel or public schools or other places. Lord, in your mercy. And last, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we collect our tithes and our offerings. Uh, this is to help God's kingdom here on earth and to help people in need. And also at this time, we collect our connection cards. And again, if you're a visitor, please give that to Pastor Tiemann after the service. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you give each of us in different ways. We are blessed spiritually, we're blessed physically. Lord, we're blessed in ways sometimes we don't even recognize. Sometimes we think we're not blessed. Help us to realize through faith the biggest blessing of all, your Son Jesus Christ and the salvation that he brings for us. Help that to be the source of joy and peace in our lives and help us to share that joy and peace with our neighbors, with our families, with everyone we meet. Lord, this week we especially ask you to watch over our school as it opens up, uh, watch over our church, help us to use these gifts with wisdom to reach out and boldly proclaim your word, whether it's through education or through preaching or ministering to the needs of others. All this we pray in your glorious name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God, who is with us at all times and in all places. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father that we may worthily receive the bread and wine, which is the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of the full salvation he has won for us. Receive our heartfelt prayers, 
Visit, deliver, and preserve us. Unite us now with all who gather with us at your table, here and with all those in your glorious presence who feast at your eternal table in the courts of heaven. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Sanctus. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, we share the peace of the Lord with each other.
stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul into life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for having fed us with the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, assuring us that thereby we are truly members of his body, the church. And we ask you to help us by your Holy Spirit that we may continue in this fellowship and do the good works that you desire us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the same Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Depart in peace with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we invite Don Curley to come forward. Well, good morning. It's the final push for Transformed. And if you haven't signed up for a study yet, there are many opportunities ahead. Uh, my wife, Julie, and I have been involved with this church for a long time. She's been involved with Emmanuel her entire life. My walk with Christ 23 years ago is when I joined this church and have been a part of many Bible studies, uh, men's ministries, as well as a uh, large uh, Bible study, we called it. Uh, midpoint for nine years and uh, all of the large group settings the worship we gather here to do uh, on Sunday mornings Saturday evenings is vital part of our growth in Christ but the point in the place in which I have seen the most growth the point in place that I have grown the most has always been in small groups and right now I'm personally involved on and off over the last 23 years have been involved with many different small groups but I'm involved in a small group a Bible study and a small group Bible study at this time because they are so vital and there's a passage in the Old Testament that talks about as iron sharpens iron so one man sharpens another that's how we strengthen each other as brothers and sisters in Christ transformed is a great opportunity this is an excellent book in these seven areas of spiritual physical mental emotional relational financial and vocational health uh, are laid out very nicely and this the seven week study is a great opportunity if you're not part of a study yet, um, if you haven't signed up for one of the transformed groups, there are many opportunities, whether it's weeknight studies. Some of you here I know are going to be leading some of the groups. Some of you have already signed up. If you haven't, I encourage you to do so. Uh, once again, there are weeknight studies. There are weekend studies with different groups, people meeting in homes, as well as if you haven't signed up and you're more comfortable during the 930 hour, we've got multiple opportunities starting next Sunday during the 930 hour where you can be part of a small group. And if we end up with a lot of people in one room, we'll watch the video together and then we'll break into small groups for the discussion. And once again, this is the part where then you develop relationships. Take those relationships with you into your uh, launch into something for possibly years to come where you can go ahead and gather and grow together in God's word with a group of people um, that will just, I, I promise you, have tremendous benefit. So you can talk to Pastor Padel uh, or Sharon Tiemann. I know she was just posting things back up on the board uh, this morning. And you can be a part of any of these studies, whatever works for you, and the personalities that you might see, names up there where somebody you might know and feel more comfortable, I encourage you to do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Don. At this time, we're going to stand and join in singing our closing hymn, number 862, O Bless the House.